Good morning, wonderful sons and daughters of God. We are glad to be able to come and speak the word of God to you. We are grateful, even as we agree with Paul, that we may be quarantined, but the word of God is not. We may be stopped from gathering together, but that has stopped us from receiving the word of the Lord. So this wonderful morning, this triumphant Sunday morning, we are grateful for the Lord giving us the opportunity to celebrate and say Hosanna with them that said Hosanna in the days of old. So this wonderful morning, we are grateful. Jeff is my name and I'm saved this gracious day. Grateful for the grace of God to allow us to speak the word of God to you. We will take it from the book of Psalm 91 from verse 1 through 5. So you have your Bible with you. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 91, verse 1 through 5. If it's on your phone, flip the pages. If it's on your other electronic tablet, get it. That together we may read. I'm reading from the old version. I'm reading from the King James Version. And I'm carrying the pulpit Bible this morning to have church. So if you're there, let us read together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, under His wings you shall trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. That is the word of the Lord. Now that you don't have a neighbor to turn to because everybody is keeping social distance, tell yourself, I will dwell in the Lord. I will dwell in the Lord. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father in heaven, we are thankful for the opportunity of hearing your word in the confines of space that where we are. In the brevity of time availed, speak to us. Let your word find space in our hearts. Let your word bear fruit, even fruit that will last. And above all else, help us to dwell and be established in you. This is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. The key word of Psalm 91 is to dwell. Now to dwell is to live, it is to tabernacle, it is to permanently reside. So the writer of the psalm is saying to us, we need to permanently reside in God so that we can be found in the secret place where God keeps his beloved. To dwell, to live there is not to pass by, is not to live nearby. It's not to know where it is. It's not to read about it. It is to actually dwell. It is a practical thing. In these difficult times, faith has become practical. In these difficult times, we need to dwell. Because if you don't dwell in the presence of God, then you dwell in the presence of other people who keep telling you numbers, people who are dying, people who are sick, and numbers keep rising, like age and taxes. And so as we dwell, in the presence of God, then we will reside in the secret place and we will abide under the shadow. When we dwell with the Lord, we will tabernacle with him. We will fellowship with him. We will walk with him. We will walk so close that in that fellowship we shall abide. We shall not just be coming and going, not treating God like, like a spare wheel will be there listening to him, abiding with him, and will be so close to him that his shadow will fall over us. His shadow will be upon us. His shadow is mobile with us. He's like an umbrella. So as we dwell with him, as we tabernacle with him, as we abide with him, his shadow moves together with us. Therefore, we shall be able to say, my God and my fortress. It is personal. It is no longer collective. It is no longer just appearing. It is personal. 
it has to be real. It is that God who keeps us, who protects us, that we shall be able to say, my God and my fortress, my God, personal, my fortress, my shield, he will keep me safe. He will keep me in him. I will abide in him and I will be safe in him because he is my God. I am related to him personally. He is my God. I will dwell under his shadow. He is not only my God. He is my fortress. He is my fortified dwelling place. It is fortified. Therefore, the enemy cannot come. He is not building it when you are there. He built it before. He foresaw. Therefore, he has already built the fortress. Ours is just to dwell. Many of us, we are experiencing hand sanitizers. For the first time, we are buying them. But you already had soap and water. So as we dwell with God, he is not building for us. He has already built for us. He is my God. He is my fortress. In him will I trust. Now the word trust is leaning completely. It is depending completely in that God. Not depending on other things, not other philosophies, not other thoughts of life, but depending on God. Because it is that way that when we trust in him, we can be able to say, my God, like Ruth trusted in the days of old, and she said to her mother-in-law, Naomi, your God shall be my God. It is that personal, like Miriam celebrating just after crossing the Red Sea, he said, my God has delivered us. It is that God that keeps us going, like Jacob prayed, that my God, God, if you keep me when I go and bring me back safely to this place, I will offer a sacrifice. It is my God, even in times of doubt, like Thomas said, my God, I believe. It is the same premise that we are depending on that God, that we can be able to walk with him in times of difficulty. There was no son in Naomi's womb. There was no son in Naomi's future. But yet Ruth said, my God, your God shall be my God. So in these times of coronavirus that has kept on moving from handshakes, has kept on moving from touching, it is now even coughing, now you have to wear masks, and so on and so forth, we will still say to God, my God, you are my refuge and my fortress. Because God will protect you with his feathers. Old King James says, with his pinions, their strong feathers spread out to keep us safe, to keep us within, to keep the enemy out. Yes, yet under the wing are soft feathers to keep us warm. That in the protection of God, we shall stay in the warmth of his presence, experiencing his goodness, looking out to the world. And saying to the world, you may appear strong, you may appear like you're coming to get me, but you never get to me because my God is my shield. My God has spread his pinions out to protect me. Not only that, that his word is truthful. You can depend on him. His truth, his word you can depend on. His word is your shield and your buckler. Now this is exciting. Because the word used for shield in Hebrew denotes that shield that protects you. Therefore, this God not only protects us, but he moves us out. We move out with him under his protection. His protection of faith over us. But the buckler is a human shield that you wear. It's like body armor. It's like a bulletproof vest that the police wear when they are going out. Bullets may hit, but they will not hurt you because the buckler of God is with you. And even when we fail, like we sometimes will, and we fall in the trap of the fowler, the trap of the one who seeks to remove us and move us away 
from God. When we fall into that trap of believing what the devil is saying, the Lord himself will deliver us. The Lord himself will come for us. When we have believed at the numbers and we have been distressed, it is the Lord that comes to us. At these times of close confinement, when men have nothing to do apart from lying around, it is important for us to depend on that God to keep us sane. It is that God that will deliver us from depression. It is that God that will keep us from being trapped by these highly inflated numbers. It is this God that will keep us from the fear of extrapolatory mathematics. 10,000 by the end of April, 50,000 by the end of June. We'll have it by September. We're not worried about that because our God is going to be together with us. He will remove us from the fowler and then he will make us not fear pestilence. Diseases have come. Cancer has become an issue. Lifestyle diseases, high blood pressure and uh, sugar diabetes. Not only that, but now COVID-19 has come. But God will deliver us from all these pestilence. That we will look and experience his victory. That we will see and experience his power. Because his power is over us. So as you dwell in quarantine, as you keep social distance, depend on that God. Lean on that God. Dwell in him that you can be able to say, my God. Even when things look bleak like they did in the days of Ruth, my God. Even as things look tough, as they look tough for Jesus, my God. Even when things look like it can't get done, believe like Thomas and say, my God. Dwell in that God and be not afraid be joyful for we are great in God God whom we serve God who cares for us God who will keep us so this day purpose to dwell in God desire design to live in that God and for that God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit shall we pray Gracious Father in heaven, we are thankful for the opportunity of hearing your word. Your word is not caged. Your word is co not confined. Your word is not under the law. And as it flows, eternal God, may it have impact upon our lives. May it give us revelation. May it give us grace to abide even in these difficult times. Eternal God, you who are with your servants in the days of old, continue being Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Continue being Jehovah El Shaddai, the God that never lacks. Continue being the God who provides. But above all else, continue to remind us that you are Emmanuel, God together with us. So walk with us and be glorified and bless your people. Bless their coming in and bless their going out. Bless them, dear Lord. Bless the work of their hands. Bless the places they have invested. May they never suffer lack. For we serve a God that serves us no lack. Hear this prayer which we offer in faith through Jesus Christ who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you very much. May God bless you and keep you even as we receive the benediction. And now I commend you into the hands of the living God who alone is able to keep you and to sustain you. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God cause his face to shine upon and be gracious to you. May the Lord God lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And may that peace of God that surpasses human understanding keep your hearts and minds stayed upon dwelling in the presence of the living God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and the ones you love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Look forward to seeing you through the Holy Week. In Jesus' name, bless you.